In this video, I'm gonna show you a system I came up with to change the channel on your amp from your guitar. What is up everyone, Van Von Mellet here. I'm sure at some point in your music career, you've been on stage jamming when you realize a clean part's coming up, but your pedal board is on the other side of the stage. So you have to run over there as fast as you can only to knock over your singer on the way. Well, this completely wireless amp switcher might be right for you. If you've ever ran into your stinger on stage because he's somewhere he shouldn't be, make sure to subscribe. Now, if you're skeptical, I assure you I'm changing my amp channel from my guitar with no wires involved. I even have my guitar wireless on to prove it. The short of it, I'm using an Arduino Nano and wireless transceiver in my guitar, which is powered off a nine volt battery to send a signal to another Arduino Nano and wireless transceiver in an enclosure on my pedal board, which then sends a MIDI signal to my Boss ES8, switching my amp channel, as well as setting up the rest of my pedals for the patch. How it all works together is a little more complicated than that, but we'll get into it. Now, there are some caveats to how it all works together, but that's because I designed this system to work perfectly with my rig. I have it set up to control my ES8 with MIDI program changes, but it could control anything with MIDI. One thing I want to know is what you all think. Is this something you would be interested in adding to your rig? Let me know in the comments. On my ES8, I mainly use three patch types, lead, distorted rhythm, and clean. So I only need to send one of three different signals to change my patch. Now, I don't only use three patches, but in almost every bank, patch one is my lead patch, two is my distorted rhythm patch, and three is my clean patch. I know what you're thinking, I bet your device doesn't compensate for different banks. Of course it does. On the main three patches in every bank I use, the SA will send a MIDI signal to the switching pedal to tell it what bank it is currently set to. You can see the LED double flashes when it receives the signal. Now when I send the signal from the guitar, the box knows exactly what signal to send to the ES8 to keep it in that bank. You notice the LED double flashes when I send a signal from my guitar, but that's just because it's receiving the message from the ES8 when the patch changes. I thought about programming that out, but when I see the double flash from across the stage, I know the change took. The ES8 isn't the only thing this system is built around, also my guitar. Not only do these switches control what signal to send to the pedal board, but they are also my pickup switches. The first switch switches between my bridge pickup and neck pickup. There is no middle position because I never use both pickups together. The second is a coil split switch for the neck pickup. In the down position, the neck pickup is wired in series like normal. In the up position, a coil splits the neck pickup so only a single coil is used. I use a neck pickup in series for my leads and coil split for my cleans. And my bridge pickup is used for my distorted rhythm. Now I only ever need to flip one switch to change the pickups and amp channel. Switch one down will send a signal for my rhythm patch. It doesn't matter what switch two is set to. Switch one up and switch two down will send a signal for my lead patch and both switches up will send a signal for my clean patch. I use mini toggle switches in this guitar, which works great because they have two sets of poles, one for switching the pickups, the other for switching the system. If you use a blade switch or a larger pickup selector, this might be more difficult to do, but the switching system doesn't need to be connected to the pickup switch. It's just nicer to only flip one switch. There can be an issue using only one switch though. What if I don't want the patch to change when I change pickups or the bank I'm using isn't set up normally with the lead rhythm clean configuration? Of course, I've accommodated for this. On the rare occasion, I don't want the patch to change. When I change my pickups, all I need to do is step on the pedal. Now the switching system is in manual standby mode. The guitar will still send signals to the box, but it won't do anything with them. You can tell it's in manual standby mode because the LED slowly flashes on and off. It will still receive changes from the ES8. So when I hit the switch to put it back in active mode, it will make sure to stay on the current bank. If the bank doesn't use the normal lead rhythm clean configuration, instead of sending a bank signal to the switching pedal, it sends a signal to go into auto standby mode. It works the same way as the manual standby mode and you can tell it's in this mode because the LED brightness ramps up and down. When I switch back to an active bank, auto standby mode turns off. Also, when the pedal is first turned on, it starts in auto standby mode until it receives a signal from the ES8. Like I said earlier, the Arduino and transceiver in the guitar is powered off a nine volt battery. The battery life isn't too bad. It's only on when the guitar is plugged in and the battery will last about six days with a rechargeable lithium battery. I actually did a voltage strain test on it and it looks like this. One thing I was slightly worried about is the battery dying during a performance. This could be easily avoided by changing or recharging the battery before every show 
but instead I added a function where I monitor the battery voltage and send a rough level to the pedal. I set three levels for the battery voltage based on the battery drain test. When the battery hits 6.5 volts, I only have about three and a half hours left, so that level will be one. At seven volts, I have about 28 hours left, so level two will be between six and a half and seven volts, and anything over seven volts will be level three. When I send a channel change to the pedal, it will also send the battery level. I can check the battery level by holding down the foot switch, and the LED will blink one, two, or three times. But I might not always think to check the battery level, so I added another function that if the battery is at level one, the LED on the pedal will blink fast. Once it starts blinking, I know I have a little more than three hours left, which should give me enough time to finish the set, then change the battery. If this is something you want to do yourself, it's certainly not the hardest thing in the world. The most difficult part is programming the Arduinos. Everything you need to learn to do this is available on the internet. You just need to do some research and piece everything together. I'll get you started with what hardware I used. If you have no interest in building this yourself and would rather purchase a kit or a completed system, I want to know what you would want. This is obviously a prototype, but if enough of you were interested, I could get some PCBs designed, an enclosure for the guitar portion made, and start putting together a kit. Or if every guitarist wanted this, I could look into producing an actual product. And how would you want to use it? With an ES8 or some other MIDI controller? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts, starting with a guitar transmitter. This consists of an Arduino Nano and NRF24L01 Plus wireless transceiver. I use solid leads to keep the boards as close as possible. I use quick connectors to connect the battery and switches in the guitar. The Arduino also has two resistors to create a voltage divider to measure the battery voltage. They are covered in shrink tube to prevent any shorts. I soldered on a short piece of wire to the antenna trace to improve reception. There is a version of the transceiver with an antenna, but it would be difficult to fit in the guitar cavity. The Arduino is switched on when a TS plug is inserted into the jack. I do plan to have an enclosure 3D printed at some point, but for now, I just wrapped everything in painter's tape. Moving on to the pedal. On the outside, it has an LED and foot switch on top. At the back, your nine volt power input and on the side, 3.5 millimeter TRS MIDI in and outs, as well as the antenna. Opening the pedal, there's a generic PCB mounted to the bottom with the Arduino Nano and transceiver mounted to headers so I can move or replace them. The PCB also includes the MIDI input circuit. Under the Arduino is a dip switch. It needs to be switched off from programming the Arduino. Otherwise, the MIDI input circuit prevents any programming from happening. It took me a little while to figure that out. Everything mounted in the top of the pedal uses quick connectors to connect to the PCB. With the connectors and raised Arduino and transceiver, it's pretty tight in there, but everything fits. I would like to make a custom PCB that would mount to the top of the enclosure and not require the connectors. As far as programming goes, I'm not going to give out my sketches right now, mostly because I'm not a good code writer and I'll probably be bombarded with questions when they don't work for you. However, to give you direction, you should use these two libraries in your sketches. I'll also include links in the description to some helpful websites. Again, please let me know if this is something you would be interested in, how you would want to use it, and if you'd want to build it or buy a finished product. But hey, until next time, rock on. Oh.